and today I will teach you how to play Flamingo Flats. First, I will show you what you get in the Flamingo Flats download. As you see here, you get the game board. You also get the instructions for how to play. You get the vibrant I found the flats in one success poster. There are activity sheets about drawing flats that you can send home with your students after they've played the game. You have four flamingo game pieces for one player or one team and four shrimp game pieces for the other player or the other team. Finally, you have 33 sight reading cards and these are all either flat keys or the key of C. I'll explain those in a little bit. And just for fun, there's some blank ones if you wanted to create your own. Let's learn how to play Flamingo Flats. First, you will put the players on each side. It does not matter which side they're on. The flamingos can be on either side and the shrimp can be on either side, but you put them all on the start places. This is a checker type game. Less complicated though. You'll want to shuffle your Flamingo Flats cards. And then it's very easy. Each player takes turn picking a card and the goal is to identify how many flats are being played in this excerpt. So you have B flat, E flat, A flat, the key of E flat major, which you can have your students identify that if you're helping them with key signatures as well. But you're gonna go through and say, okay, the E flat is one flat, then there's a B flat, that's two flats. This B flat makes three flats, and this E flat makes four flats in this excerpt. So the player who picks this moves forward four places. Now, here's where it gets fun. They can move one piece forward or sideways. You just cannot move diagonally. You can move forward, backward, sideways. So, sorry, flamingos go first. Either they move one piece, one, two, three, four, or they can split their moves. And this is important because the rocks and the seaweed block the path. So this flamingo cannot do one, two, three, four. They could do one, two, three, four, or you could do one, two, three, Four. You can split the plays however you want to. And this is really important when you're playing with teams, when you're playing group lessons, because when you're playing group, each player can get a different game piece, but then they can kind of basically play together to move across the board, okay? So that was a little premature, but there's how you play group game. There's a little bit of group gameplay explanations and the directions. We're just playing as if it's two players, as if it's teacher versus student. So let's just say that's where I moved my four pieces because that's where I moved them. This one has one, two, three, four notes affected by the key signature. So they move forward four. I'm gonna move one piece. One, two, three, four. Okay, this one has one, two, three. They get to move forward three. Let's do one, two. All right, pieces can jump each other, so I'm a little hesitant about what to do right there. Ah, oh, this is in the key of C. All right, there are no flats, so that means that this player skips a turn. So it basically is like a skip. So now it's the flamingo's turn again. And it's another key of C, so they also skipped. I did not shuffle these well. The perks of having a fresh game. All right, so this has one, two. So they can move one, two. Now this is a really good move because next turn they could jump him, but they cannot be jumped because the flamingo cannot jump them into the blocked space. There might be a way around this. I'm very competitive. So let's see if the flamingos can do it. One, two, it's just a two move. Okay, there's no good way to do this. What could happen was if I had three, I could do one, two, three and jump them sideways, but I didn't get three, I got two. So I'm just going to move other flamingos. So one, two, shrimp. This one is one, two, three. So they do jump one, two, three, and they're safe. Okay, there's two ways you can do this. You can either once a game piece is jumped, it stays out of the game. That's a very competitive way to do it. But a little while ago I was playing this and I jumped two pieces in a row. So then 
that team had three pieces out and only one piece on the game board. That is a competitive way to play. If you have older students or competitive students, that's a really good way to play. But if you have younger students who do not like their pieces getting jumped and out, then what you could do is instead of drawing a card, when it's their turn, they can come back on the game board with start. So you can play both ways. If you do it this way, it obviously will take longer. So just work with what goes with your schedule. So we're gonna play that way. So I'm instead of picking a card, I'm putting my flamingo back on the board. Okay, now it's the shrimp's turn. They skip flamingos. They have one, two, three. So we'll do one, two, three. The shrimp have one, two, three, four. Oh, this is lovely. One, two, three, four. That poor flamingo. I'm just gonna keep going for the flamingos. They have one, two. So I'll do one, two. The shrimp have one, two, three. Let's do one, two, three. Flamingos have one, two, three, four. Let's do one, two, three, four. The shrimp, one, two, three. One, two, three. Flamingos, one, two. Let's do one, two. Shrimp, let's say he wants to get another game piece. Then the flamingos, let's do it this way. One, two, one, two. This one does take strategy. I'm trying to beat myself. One, two, three for the shrimp. We'll do one, two, three. This one has one, two, one, two. Shrimp have one, two, we'll do one, two. One, two, three for the flamingos. One, two, three. They're putting them in the danger zone. Shrimp have one, two, three as well. And yes, they'll do one, two, three. So it keeps on going like that and you keep playing. I think you get the, the idea of how it's played. I think I've covered all the cards that we have. So you're gonna keep playing until the first player, you know, gets their cards at the end. And what I had was the first player who gets it, but you could decide, do you want the first player to get all the pieces remaining to the end zone? Because if that's the case, then the flamingo could win and they only have one piece versus the shrimp have more pieces on the board. So you can decide and you can actually change up the outcome like, okay, whoever gets whatever pieces they have to the end zone first wins, or whoever can have the most pieces on the board wins. It's a very competitive game. You can do a lot of strategy with it, but you can also keep it simpler for the younger students as well. Like I said earlier, you can play this with a group play. So since all of the shrimp are on the other side, we'll keep the flamingos on this side. And the way that the group play works is your students are just gonna be taking turns, basically and they can play anyone on their team. So you can have up to eight students play. You can have four players play the shrimp and four players play the flamingos and they could technically each choose their piece, but then they can all play together. So that way they can avoid being jumped. So this one, they would have like one, two, and so then this player, maybe it's this player, but maybe they decide, well, I wanna move this one one and this piece one and their goal is to try to get their team winning. This one has two, and so it might be this player, but maybe they'll decide they wanna move this one up two pieces. So that's how I would play it in a group game, is teamwork to decide, because let's say your pieces are like here, and this player right here picks a three. Well, I would want to do one, two, jump their piece, and then three. So it's a teamwork game and basically you're trying to get as many of your team's pieces to the other end without being jumped.
and there's a lot of places for them to be jumped. So it's some strategy and it's teamwork. So that's how I would play it in a group game. Remember when you play this, you can take pictures to celebrate who won with flamingo flats and don't forget to send your students home with an activity sheet so that way they can practice drawing their flats and be reminded of their key signatures. If you and your students enjoy playing flamingo flats and you take pictures of it to share on social media, please tag us at Music Game Club on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. We hope you and your students have fun.